Chanel and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today on location from sunny Hollywood, California with our special guest, Anel Padrero, but <laughs> most people know her simply as Anel. Hello, Anel. Hey there. What's up, people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got a fascinating story, and I want to share that with the people because you've done so much cool stuff, and I, I'd like to hear about your musical upbringing, how you were first exposed to music, and how you became a bass player and eventually a kala ukulele, a u-bass player. So I'll turn it over to you. What What is your story? What What are your earliest memories of being exposed to music and realizing that you liked it and you wanted to yeah. be a part of it and have it be a part of you? Well, very young, like both my parents are like into music, but they're not professionals. Um, but they were always, music was always around home. And so I started playing violin when I was really young. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. Let me, let me jump in already. <laughs> yeah. what, what kind of music was always in the home? Um, well, it was classical, Beatles, and more classical. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I started with uh, classical violin, and I was touring um, with the juvenile orchestra I don't know how do you say it in English but the youth with, youth orchestra youth, maybe youth orchestra okay. of my state when I was 10 to 14 wow. and then I was already sold I was like forget school who needs that no stay in school <laughs> and um, yeah so I, I automatically like made a connection with music and I was like I need to keep doing this like so I went to Mexico City for college um, and I started singing there because I was like, oh, I think I like singing too. So I started singing and by then I kind of like self-taught myself guitar. So I was doing that. And after a little bit, I went to Barcelona, which to the conservatory there, I was studying violin and voice and they teach me piano there i mean piano was always on the picture but i was always ignoring it because not my favorite thing but it's great <laughs> well do you find that having some proficiency on the piano helps you with your singing and with your guitar playing and I your violin would playing be a terrible musician if i didn't play piano it definitely like makes music visible so do it even though if it's not your instrument <laughs> yeah it's, even the drummers yeah no do it. I know. <laughs> no, it, I wouldn't change for anything. And I enjoy playing it now. But definitely in the beginning, I was more of a string person. So I was like, man, I gotta learn piano now. Like, <laughs> Well, from yeah. the period from when you were 10 to 14 playing in the youth orchestra and then when you went to Mexico City to study in, yeah. in college, at some point there must have been something that, that clicked in your head that said, I want to do this as a career, not just yeah. as, as a, a hobby. Uh, when, when did that happen? And the second part of that question is, were your parents supportive? Did they have that in mind? Well, oh, she's a little girl. Let's give her violin lessons and look what happened. Uh, so tell us that story. Um, I decided I wanted to be a musician like when I was around 10. Like I was already wow. around music before, but when I started like touring and doing these things and I was like, hey, I'm not, you know, in school just doing this like my life was not boring as a kid you know like and for myself you know and so I was like I want to do this and so mom sent me to a conservatory or something you know what about your friends when you're 10 years old and and you know kids are doing what kids are doing playing ball yeah. riding bikes doing things were you locked in a closet practicing the violin pretty much I was that kid <laughs> yeah um I was actually telling uh, a friend like I wasn't doing anything else like I would go to school and couldn't wait to get out to go to four-hour practice and then rehearsals wow. and then that was it that was my life and I loved it like yeah friends were there but my life was so overtaken by music that I was like Okay, cool. I'll see you when I see you. Okay. <laughs> well, that is a great story. And we've heard the words violin. We've heard the words piano. We've heard the word uh, voice, singing. Uh, we've heard just about everything but the word bass. So when, when, when and how did that come to be? 
so that happened way later. I was already 21, and I came back from Spain to, L well, not came back. I decided from Spain to move to LA, and because my teachers from Spain had studied here, and they were, they were like, mm, well, actually, in one of my classes in Spain in the conservatory there, um, bass player didn't show up. Don't do that. But I took the job because <laughs> the bass player didn't show up. So I was like, okay, it was a simple song. And the teacher was like, here, grab this bass. It was still in school. It was Electric like, bass? Yeah. Okay. And she's like, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And so I figured out, I was like, oh, this is really fun. You know, I was like, with two notes. Perfect. You don't need more. One and five. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I found it like amazing. And then happened that her uh, husband is a he's actually a very successful bass player in Spain. He, and she was like, I think you're a bass player. I see that thing that I see with my husband. I was like, yeah, sure. Whatever. You know, <laughs> and then she's like, no, no, get a lesson. And so I got a lesson with him. And he was like, yeah, you're a bass player, you know that? And I'm like... You're one of us. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. So I got a bass. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, Sorry. Did you ever play the upright bass? I mean, that's just a great big violin. I'm playing it now. <laughs> but yeah, with no, the bow? No. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the bow it's, is... It's different, isn't it? Yeah, but I found it actually, like, very comfortable for me. Like, I don't know, it kind of, like the technique that I had for violin and like just whoop shift and I was like oh yeah. okay French bow or German bow French bow okay well, that's more like the violin yeah yeah okay. so let's yeah. touch on some highlights from your career because I know you've done a lot of stuff why don't you share that with these nice people here <laughs> tell us uh, uh, what, what you've been doing in your career um, well this summer I recently came back from tour an Asia tour I went uh, touring with First, that was a week in Singapore with Maytel Cohen. She's a drummer from YouTube. And after that, I joined, well, I was already there on tour with Dea. Um, she's a pop singer. <laughs> you probably know her songs. Um, and yeah, I was pretty much a month out. And it was very, very, very fun. I've never been to Asia before, and I was like, whoa, i got to come back. <laughs> yeah, everything's different. The culture, yeah. the food. The food, oh my God, so much food poisoning, but uh, <laughs> my stomach is something else. That's not <laughs> what I meant, but I guess that is a part of it. I'm allergic to seafood, so that uh, add on. Oh so. boy, well, yeah, you, uh, that, that could be challenging in Asia. Let's let's take the next step in the transition mm -hmm. from bass to the U bass, yes. which is just fascinating. I've interviewed so many people that play the U bass, and at first I think people didn't really know what to make of it, but uh, it it really is a serious instrument, and uh, it it functions as a bass yeah. with Bagiti Kumalo, Abraham Laboriel, and and so many others. Yeah. So tell us about your attraction to the U bass, what you use it for, how you use it, why you like it, and anything yeah. else you want to share about the Kala U bass. I seriously when I don't I don't quite remember how I got to see it. I don't know if it was NAM. It was one of these conventions, you know, that you see things and I was like, man, that looks way cool. And I didn't quite play it because I was like shy or something. And then so I was like <laughs> Okay. <laughs> We don't believe you, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, uh, I I bought one because I wanted a small thing to take and like be able to jam anywhere or play anywhere. I was also getting a lot of like acoustic gigs and like the bass, like it's not acoustic, you know. And like, yeah, I had like another actual acoustic, but I wasn't like I wasn't happy with the tone I was getting of an acoustic full scale bass and then I got a U bass and I was like oh my god I like literally completely was like that's it that's it this is it <laughs> I'm going anywhere <laughs> like literally every time I travel I take a U bass with me no joke like I'm which, not trying to sell nothing here yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which model you did you play this one all the time or uh, do you have uh, actually, more, do you have the have, any solid bodies or yeah I have the honey solid and it's like the very 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 first model they came out with uh, doesn't even have a tuner. It's like the antique one, you would call it. <laughs> and like it's, I like nothing's ever happened to it. It's like perfect conditions. Like I've never even changed the strings, which you should. But I like the tone that's coming out of it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it is unique. Now the early ones 
still had these uh, polyurethane strings yeah. and some of them now have metal strings. Yeah. Do you use those too or do you just stick I with these? I have another one with the metal ones, but I use this one more because of the warm tone I get with it. I, you can uh, imitate an upright very, very yes. accurately and like you're not carrying an upright, which if you have one, you know what that means. Yes. <laughs> I sure do. Well, that's great. You have more yeah. than one, so you have the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. What about Definitely. the future? You're still very young, <laughs> especially to me. So tell us about what else you'd like to do in your career. What are you What are you excited about? What is the, the next step? Or what are, you, uh, what are you looking forward to doing that you haven't done yet? Actually, I am coming out with a new project very soon. Um, I'm writing an EP myself, so I'm singing and playing U-bass, upright, electric, piano, everything I can put my hands into. Violin? And, ah! Violin too? Violin too. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'm preparing my own album and that's exciting. That's what's coming up. That is so exciting. Well, you be sure to... to know. Ah! You be, <laughs> sh be sure to let us know. We'll share that with everybody and we will spread the word. Thanks. Last question, Anel. I, I, my signature sign-off question is, what would you be if you weren't a bass player? But you can't say a violin player, piano player, a <laughs> guitar player, a vocalist, something outside of music. What would you be? I probably could be or would want to be two different things. A doctor or an actor. Way different. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, maybe somehow you can incorporate some of the, uh, I don't know about doctor <laughs> skills, but maybe acting skills into your act. Whatever it is, whatever you end up doing, and I know you're going to stick with the music. You better stick with the music. Yes. I know whatever you end up doing, it's going to be great. <laughs> so congratulations so on all your success. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Let us know about that new EP. I will so definitely let you know. <laughs> we will watch for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. On location with Anel in sunny Hollywood, California. I'm John Liebman. You're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com.